Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about how to use your lower body for more power and speed. Hey guys, we're out here today at the beautiful Palm Beach Par 3 in Palm Beach, Florida. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use your lower body for more power and speed. Now, before we dive in, I would like to let all of you guys know we have launched our dates for golf schools in Bethlehem, PA this summer and spring uh, and fall. We'll put the link in the description down below. Now, if you can't make it for in-person coaching to a two-day school, we can also work together through CogornoGolf.com. That's our online community full of golfers like yourself and myself. That's where I can help coach you from wherever you are in the world. You can send in your swing videos and the coach at Cogorno Golf and myself will help you get access to our Facebook group where you can post your swing. You get access to all of our complete website at CogornoGolf.com, the member library, the quick fix section, the practice section, and all of our master classes. Would love to see you guys there. All right guys, so let's talk about how we use our lower body for more power and speed. Now, as we've done videos in the past about the lower body and how to use the lower body in the swing, um, we've done a bunch of videos on how to use the hips, how to use the, the lead leg or the left leg, how to use the trail or right leg. In this video in particular, I'd like to talk a little bit more about how to use the right side or the right leg and right foot. And this is a topic that come up a lot recently in CogornoGolf.com and I realized we didn't really have a full encompassing video on it, so we're gonna talk about it today. So, how do I use my lower body to create more power and more speed? Now, the big picture concept here of how I use my lower body is my feet are above the ground, right? My only attachment of my body is to the ground. And so I need to use the ground, use planet Earth to be able to create speed. And players that we see that use their lower body to create speed use the ground well or efficiently or at all and players that we see that don't create as much speed in simple terms really don't use the ground as well as they could. That's kind of what I want to talk to you about here. Now, what I want to do is I want to present three different feels and one specific drill that you can use to use your right foot and right leg to create more power and speed. All right, so let's talk about what we're supposed to do. Now, during the downswing, we said, big picture, I want to be able to use the ground for speed. Now, what does that look like and what do I not want to do? Now, if I go up to, let's say, the top of my backswing from here from the top, what I want to be able to do as I'm uh, making my downswing is certainly I'm going to be shifting pressure into my left side and into my left foot. I'm going to be pressing into the ground with my lead side. But what is my right foot supposed to do in that transition phase? What I'd like for you to think from here is from the top of the swing, your right foot shouldn't be going immediately in like so. It shouldn't be coming off of the ground like this way. So this would be bad right off the bat. This would be bad. Really what you want to do is think that your foot is going to be pushing back more or less in the direction of that club. So as my pressure is working into my left foot, as I'm going slightly down and forward, my right foot's not just doing nothing, it's actually pushing and feeling like I'm pushing in the ground in this direction. That is how I create speed. So if you think about it this way, as I'm working down, pressing into my left, my right foot, kind of from here, my right foot is feeling it's pushing in this direction as my left foot and leg are pushing in this direction. So it's almost like it's working in opposite directions. I'm not going from here and pushing everything forward towards the target. My left foot, after I shift my pressure, feels like it's working around and up and back. But as that's happening, my right foot is feeling like it's working back behind me. That's really how I use the ground most efficiently. That's the general concept we're going here push down into the left, and then from there, the left goes up and around as the right feels like it stays back and forward. Of course, it's not gonna stay there the whole time. That's the concept. Let's talk about a couple feels and drills. Okay, so as you start to hit balls with this for more speed and power, there's really three potential feels I want you to start with. The number one feel to get some speed here um, is really just what we said, is feeling your foot pressing back and forward. So how do you do that? When I go up to the top, I'll just go about halfway back. As I start down, I'm gonna feel like my pressure goes forward, but I'm gonna feel my right foot almost like it's going in this direction. So when I start, 
my right foot's not straight forward at 12 o'clock or this way. It's actually flared a little. So let's say here's 12 o'clock. My right foot is flared probably to about one o'clock on this clock. What you wanna feel like as you're working down is your toes go from pointing at one to pointing more towards three o'clock. So if my shoe would actually twist in this direction, this way. So I start at one, I'm gonna feel like it works till three. That helps keep my leg external a little bit longer to create speed. So that's gonna be feel number one. I'm gonna take my normal setup. My toes are pointed at one and I'm gonna feel like they start to point at three. Now it's not actually gonna twist when I'm doing it, it's just a feel. So let's go ahead and hit one here first. Keep an eye on my right foot, starts at one, twist to three o'clock and I'll just start with a little half one here. Twist to three. And that's gonna be the feel that I'm gonna start with to create some speed. Now, that would be feel number one. In along with that, as I'm doing that, would be feel number two, which is a general theme of lengthening out my trail side, okay? So when I come down, if I wanna create speed, this would be no speed, okay? This would be no speed. Speed from here would be I'm pushing in this direction early, right foot goes from one o'clock to three o'clock but then as i'm about halfway down from here i need to push vertical out of the ground and lengthen this out so my next feel would be the distance between my right hip and my right big toe should be as far apart as possible here's them getting closer together here's them getting farther apart you see the difference there? So I'm extending my trail leg. I'm lengthening out my quad. I can feel my quad and my hamstring and glute stretching. This would be feel two to create speed. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I'm working here. My right foot feels like it's going from one to three early, but then from there, it's really lengthening. I'm getting my hips up forward and lengthening out my right quad, lengthening out my leg. This would be feel number two. Let's go ahead and hit one with that. So lengthening out my quad and leg. And that would be feel number two that I'm gonna create some speed with. Any of you guys that have early extension issues, any kind of knee working too far forward, lengthening that feel out is gonna be a great one. Have one more feel for speed and then a really good drill. Okay, last little feel here. And this is really for a lot of you guys that are aware that you don't use your lower body correctly. Maybe you get up on your toes too soon and you lose all that uh, potential power with your right leg. One really cool feel is that you wanna try and keep your right heel behind your right toes or your trail leg. So my right heel right now, when I take my setup, my heel is farther behind my toes. Now this, would be my right heel on this side of my toes. This is straight up and down. This is my right heel inside of my toes. So what works together here is I'm coming down, my toes at one o'clock, I wanna feel like my toes work from one to three. That gets my leg external part number one. From there, I wanna lengthen out my, quad, my, my leg as I'm turning. So I wanna get my hip to my toes as far apart as possible as my belt buckle turns, I'm not going like this, as my belt buckle turns, part three is I wanna keep my heel behind my toes as I work into my follow through. Now, if I do that and you stood up and did this right now, my toes are in front, my heels in the back, my quad feels lengthened, my hips are fully turned towards the target, a lot of you are gonna feel a big stretch in your right hip. That's how you create speed. So, right heel stays behind my toes, and I'll show you a drill how to do that later. So let's do just that one. Feeling my heel stay behind my toe, kind of part number three for power. And all three of those are designed to use the ground to create speed. Let's talk about this drill. Okay, so the drill that you can pair with all of these feels, I just took a simple alignment rod or driveway marker, and if we look from down the line angle, when I take my setup position, I've put that just in the ground on an angle where it's just kind of below my kneecap, okay, in terms of how high it is, and when I take my setup, I'm gonna give myself about four fingers away from my kneecap. In general, I don't want my kneecap to get more forward than the balls of my feet. So if you imagine here's a wall, just forward of where my shoelace is in, I don't want my leg going forward of that. That's essentially in simple terms, I'm not gonna use the ground properly. For me to create speed, what I wanna do is keep my knee inside of that, 
Toes go from one to three, it's just a feel, stays external. And then I'm lengthening or extending as I turn, my knee stays inside that gap. So if there were like a wall here or a table or something here, you, that, the, the idea would be that you wanna keep your knee inside of that as you're turning, gets you nice left hip depth. That's how you use the ground for speed. So if you're an early extender, okay, it's a great drill. You must start slow sand wedge, short swing, you're not going full swing with this certainly. It's gonna feel way different with your lower body. It's gonna be a great, great drill to do. So I've got the stick in. I'm gonna do a couple of rehearsals to feel it. I feel like my toes are going from one to three. I'm lengthening, keep my right heel behind my left. Now, do you need to think about all three of those? Of course not, can you? Yes. You're probably trying to find one of these that really helps if you're someone that doesn't get speed here. So let's go ahead and chip one with this first. So I've got that about four fingers inside of my leg, doing a half one, feeling that same lengthening effect. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little half one here to feel that. Good. And now for me too, who has early extension, I feel when I do this, my knees from down the line are very close. There's not a lot of space between them. My knees are close and my left hip is back behind me. So that's three, maybe three and a half, four feels and one drill to really learn how to use your trail leg to create speed. I think these are fairly universal concepts that you can put in place if you want more speed. Certainly, if you have too much early extension, you wanna put that in. Now, if you like this video, what I would suggest is watching both of these videos up top. They're gonna to show you how to use your lower body, explain some of the details more. Also, guys, if you like this video, click the like button down below, click the notification bell, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.